Hey guys, it's Janet Wakelin with RemarkablyCreated.com. In today's One Take Wonder video, I want to talk to you about embossing paste from Stampin' Up. If you follow me on my Facebook page, you may have seen us do this as a Facebook Live video where I did something really, really fun and very different. I literally kind of did an unboxing of embossing paste where I had never used it before and I just kind of gathered a whole bunch of different things based on how I thought it would work. I hadn't watched any videos, hadn't done any reading on it, and we just experimented. So today's video is more formal than that. It's based on the experience of that Facebook Live video and the samples that I've been playing with since then. So Stampin' Up's embossing paste is found in the annual catalog. It's absolutely amazing to work with because there are so many things that you can do with it. When you get it, it does arrive in this container inside of a little Ziploc bag. And if you have a, a Ziploc hoarding problem like me, you go ahead and you save that bag because there's lots of purposes for it. And then you're going to go on ahead and open it up. And you're going to want to remove, either by pulling nicely or doing what I just did, you want to remove that aluminum foil. Now what you're going to notice is that the jar may not appear full. The embossing paste is sold by weight four ounces and so if it's not full to the top again it's because it's sold by by weight so don't panic so you have your embossing paste it is white I did accidentally leave the lid off of mine overnight and while I had a few crusties around the top the inside didn't dry out which was absolutely fascinating to me because my samples dried so I don't know but put the lid back on it okay don't risk it like I did the other um, elements that are sold as part of the embossing paste um, quote-unquote system, we have four templates. We have this beautiful medallion, the brick walls, the clouds, and then these little triangles which could also uh, mimic a lattice. So you have that. And then we have three different palette knives. Palette knives are used in the painting world to give different textures and to spread paint around in oil painting and acrylics also used with the embossing paste. You have your um, diamond head trowel, you have what's called a Scotty knife, and then you have what's called a long trowel. And they all work just a little bit differently and you'll see me use those in just a minute. These are great because they're molded plastic. They're all one lightweight piece, which means that they're really easy to clean. You're not going to have a tip that separates from a handle, no metal to rust or anything like that. And there's no sharp edges, so they're actually um, not a weapon or not deadly or hurtful or anything like that. So those are the basics. Now some of the things that I recommend as basics to have when working with the paste is Stampin' Up's 11 by 17 grid paper and this is sold in our annual catalog. I do recommend having a roll of paper towels handy. And then one of the things that I have is I have a little pan of warm soapy water. If you can take your little um, element in here and a paper towel or a towel and wipe it clean. It will come clean. You can soak your stencils in there. You're going to see me use framelits and some other things. So a little warm soapy water in a little dish um, is perfect and it just has to be you know a quarter of an inch, half an inch deep or something like that. So that's great to have on hand. When you first get it I recommend that you just grab like a whole bunch of quarter sheets of cardstock and just start playing, which is what we're going to do now. I'm going to show you some various different ways to use it, and then I'm going to show you some dried samples, and then I'm going to actually show you some completed cards. So let's just jump right in and let's just start using the embossing paste. And I'm going to grab some darker cardstock just so that it pops a little bit better out there in video land. So let's start first with our little diamonds. Now you can choose to completely cover your project, you can choose to angle it on a little pieces. So it just depends on what look you're trying to accomplish. So this is a larger area that I'm going to want to cover. And the longer trowel is really good for those longer areas. The short little diamond one, you're going to see me probably pick that up and use that in here because I don't want to get under this edge. If I'm worried about that edge, then a scrap piece of paper, or better yet, here's the perfect use of that 11 by 17 paper. So I'm just going to fold that in under bring it to the edge here. Now the one thing that I don't have handy at the moment is either a piece of washi tape or a piece of um, what they call painters tape where I could put a little sliver down just to kind of help hold this in place. But we have this going on and it's a larger surface that I want to cover so I'm going to go ahead and use my longer trowel 
and I'm just going to use that to go ahead and spread and start kind of small because you can always go ahead and add more to it. So I'm just going to go ahead again and I'm getting up close to that edge. Up here at this edge where it's a little close I could choose to um, take my little pointy edge one and get in there close. I don't need to worry about this on this edge because I've rolled the cardstock in under it. And you want to just keep spreading it until you don't see any more of the color of the cardstock poking through. You can then scrape it and then scrape it back in and that helps kind of make it last a whole lot longer is just scraping it. Plus it helps with the cleanup of your stencil. So you're just going to do that and we'll lay that on here. We're going to lift that up carefully and then you have your image right there. If for some reason you've caught a little edge, then working with um, a clean dry palette will work. You can go ahead and you can kind of just scrape that off with a clean one of the clean dry palette knives that you haven't used yet. And then you're going to set it aside and then let it dry. My experience has shown three to five minutes, but it's going to vary based on the humidity in your studio, based on the temperature in your studio and things like that. It's also going to vary based on the thickness of the paste that you put on there. If you're in a hurry and want it to dry a little faster, you can always take Stampin' Up's heat tool and blow some heat across it and then that will help it dry a little faster. One thing to note, let's go ahead and apply a little bit of heat to this as if we were wanting to dry it. When you apply heat to it, it makes it puff a little bit, so it's going to make it more dimensional. So if you don't want the puffy look, you're going to go ahead and let it air dry naturally. So, But again, you can kind of see it maybe starting to puff up just a little bit. So you can go ahead and do that. So that's really just the basics of it, is just laying the stencil down, deciding whether you want to cover the entire card, and here's another example of one where we covered the entire card, or parts of it. If you're going to cover parts of it, you want to make sure that you're you know, being really careful that you're not getting little edges and things smushed off to the side. So there's one, and you can see here where it's pretty much almost dry. I'm rubbing my hand across it already. So there's one example for you of the very basics of the embossing powder. So now let's take another idea. The embossing powder is, embossing paste, excuse me, is great to use direct to your designer series papers. It's a great way to give your designer papers a whole nother look. In this case, I have the medallion, and I'm going to lay the entire medallion down, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scoop up my paste, and I'm going to go ahead and just start working with it. This one is really nice. It's kind of my favorite one to work with because it doesn't have any sharp pointy edge that's going to kind of get up under the stencil and catch that edge. So we're just going to keep kind of scraping around. The other thing is, is that you don't have to do the complete stencil if you don't want to. Of course, you can just do part of the stencil. So you have a lot of, lot of options when you're working with it. So let's just go ahead and finish mushing that in. And now we're going to go ahead and just come in and scrape all of our extra off. And the best way to get good at things is to, to literally let go of the outcome and to just start playing and just to, just to have some fun. Not worry about whether your project looks like somebody else's or not, but just get carried away in the, the creative discovery and the process. This is kind of like being a kindergartner in art class. I just absolutely love it. So, okay, enough smearing, guys, while we talk. So let's just lift that up. And you're going to see here that I have this beautiful medallion. I'm going to go ahead and stick that in the, in the warm, soapy water and let it start to, to kind of wash off. Now, one of the simplest and easiest things to do is, while it's still wet, you can come in and you can sprinkle your dazzling diamonds over top of it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just sprinkling it by hand, kind of shake it around, and then I'll just shake it back into my container. But you're just going to end up with this beautiful shimmery look just like this. So this is a really first alteration, easy alteration to do with it. So then another possible alteration, and did I bring my little palette with me to the workplace? No. So I happen to have one from back when we did canvases that I was still using. And what I have in this little palette is I have re-inkers. And again, you're going to just take 
your little bit of paste and I'm going to put it in there. I can either use my tip or I can use a little um, dowel or something, but I can just go ahead and I can start to just mix it into the color. Now this is pretty dark just because of the fact that um, I already had reinker in there. Normally I would have just added a few little dots. You want to be careful not to transfer reinker into this container here though. So I've just got this that I'm working with. And it's always easier to start lighter um, and add more reinker to make it darker. If you start dark, the only way to make it lighter is to add more paste to it, which can get a little bit wasteful. So let's go ahead and let's wash that one off for just a second. And we'll dry it. So I've just kind of swished it over in the water, warm soapy water, and I've done that. And then let's go ahead and let's take and make a second one and just kind of mix up our fun little colors here. So reinker is a great way to alter the color of these. And so now let's grab, this time it'll show up on white cardstock. So let's go ahead with our, our white cardstock and let's just for fun use brick. I know bricks aren't usually pink and um, pink and daffodil delight, but in this case they're going to be pink and daffodil delight. And I have a quarter sheet of our Whisper White cardstock and I'm going to start first with the lighter color. Looks like I'm spreading mustard on the card. Kind of makes me hungry for a hot dog and I'm not a big hot dog fan, but just where my brain goes. So, And again, in this case, I don't want to go off the edge, so I'm going to just slip a little piece of either scrap paper or I could fold my 11 by 17 paper back in just to make sure that I'm not going off that edge at all. So now if you mixed too much color and you don't want to waste it, you're going to need a small little jar like a, a jar that your embossing powders or glitters would come into to transfer that to so you could seal it shut. That's another reason why you want to be really careful with um, the different colors. So let's go ahead and lift that up and we have our beautiful bright yellow brick. And now I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to flip my stencil around and we're going to lay it down. Wash my palette knife off. And again, I'm just, if you started at the beginning, you saw that little purple bucket that I had with warm soapy water in it. And now let's just take our darker color here and we're just going to go ahead and add that. And again, this is a little bit darker than I might like, but I didn't, I thought I had my palette. I bet when I turn the video off and I look left or right, it's going to be sitting right in front of me. And you guys can all kind of relate to that. So let's just kind of keep working that paste in. And I'm really trying hard not to go off this edge over here on the side. So I'm going to set that down for just a second and let's clean off the tool that I used for stirring. Again, a little toothpick, a little dowel would be great for that, but at this time I'm going to just grab the tip and I'm just going to use the tip to kind of help me get close to the edge without going over. So that's going to be kind of nice to work with. And sometimes having a little bit more on instead of skimping helps because remember you can always scrape it back up when you're all done. And so let's just ooh. Let's just go ahead and scrape up all that extra and slide it on. And let's lift that up. And you've got your little two-tone brick happening there. So that's another option for you is to dye it and to use reinkers and you'll see a finished sample in just a second with that. So let's set that aside and let's let that dry. And let's rinse these off and I'll show you a couple of other things that you can do with this um, absolutely amazing paste. So let's just set that aside. We want to rinse this off though so it doesn't get cakey. The other thing though is if it ends up drying on 
your stencils or on your brushes, what I found is that you can either just pick it off or you can go ahead and just put them back in warm water and they'll soak off really nice for you by putting them back in warm water. The warmth seems to be the key to that. So let's go ahead and now let's take a different one here and I want to do that with, so let's just lay this out here for a second. Lay our stencil on it. We're going to dry it. And this is going to save you from watching one video per tip. I'm giving you a whole bunch at once. This is the composite of um, all the fun things to do with paste. So now I have my stencil again. And this time I'm just going to lay part of it on just for the interest of time and for fun. I'm going to go back to my plain paste. And I'm just going to go ahead and smear it on. And I'm not being careful right now with this one just because this is a teaching one. And so I'm not being as careful as I probably could or should. And in this case, though, let's take a little paper towel. And I'm going to come along over here and I'm just going to clean that up. Get that lifted up. So it might be hard to see out there. But what I have is I have tone on tone. And now in this case, I've got gold embossing powder. And because it's wet, like a Versamark pad would be, I can go ahead and I can put gold embossing powder over top of it. So now let's bring our heat tool back in. And now let's take a look at what happens when we heat it. While we're heating it, if you're not familiar with Stampin' Up's heat tool, Stampin' Up's heat tool has two settings. A low setting, which is perfect if you're trying to do things like shrink plastic and a high setting for your embossing. It also has a nice plastic cap over top of the hot metal piece so you don't have to worry about burning yourself or getting too close to the paper and adding a burn mark to your paper. You will notice that it's taking a few minutes because of the thickness of the embossing paste for it to really absorb the heat and start to change. So let me hold it up real high for you and see if you can start to see the change. I like to hold my heat tool in one place until I start to see a change and then I like to start to move it around as opposed to just wiggling it like that. It takes forever. Plus you end up missing a spot. So I like to chase the change. I just like to move it along. But I don't know if you can see it starting to get shiny. So you can absolutely use it for embossing, which is wonderful. And you're going to get a much thicker, higher raised embossing look than you would otherwise. So we don't need to finish that, but you get the idea is that you can go ahead and you can emboss it. So you can put any one of the powders on it, heat it up, and it will emboss great for you. So then something else fun that you can do is while Stampin' Up! has four templates, we have tons and tons of... Um, framelits. And with our window acetate, you can create your own stencil like I did here. This is one of the leaves from our seasonal layers. And I'm going to just clean off my palette knife here. And let's go ahead and let's pick up our deep red. Some of the leaves in our area get this really pretty color. So and I'm just going to put that color on. And so you're able to create your own stencils with window acetate and our framelits. It is a little bit thicker to cut, so you're either going to need a shim or you're going to need to run it back and forth a couple of different times. So, oops, okay, I got a little aggressive there with putting it on. So pretend like that, you didn't see that one. So let's just tap that on there. I was squishing it out the back side. Sorry about that. So I didn't want that to happen. It's a little bit thinner. So you just have to be a little bit careful. Okay. Watch this one squish. I can see it picking up. I needed my, bake, my painter's tape or my washi tape to hold it in place. And I'm not rubbing it this time. I'm just kind of patting it. So there you go. You can see your leaf starting to happen. And you'll see that in just a second on some other images. So you can create your own stencils. And these would wash off the same way in your little bucket of water. So now something else that you can do with them. And let's see if I can find the elements that I have here. I showed you the paper. So I have, and let's put these on white paper, not messy paper. So I have the huge large tree from Ready for Christmas. It's one of the bundles in the new holiday catalog. 
And I have the Sweet Little Trees from the Carols of Christmas bundle that is available this month for customers to purchase. And sometimes you want to just add a little bit of dimension and a little bit of snow to your trees. And I just have my fine little pointy piece. And I'm literally just painting snow on the edges of those trees. So you can see some of the really fun things that you can start to do by using the point of this diamond trowel to add snow exactly where you want it to be. I could do the same thing with the point of this trowel as I can kind of, you know, just start to lay snow in this way. But another tip is that you don't always have to use the trowels. Sometimes you can take a nice stiff brush and you can literally paint with your nice stiff brush. You can just kind of come in here and start to lay snow in and I know it's a little hard to see. Um, let me just go ahead and add a little bit more on here um, on this big beautiful tree. So I can go ahead and I can paint with it and just add some some element. Oops, that's a little bit much. Good news is it's not dry yet so I can come back in and pick it up but I can paint with it using a paintbrush. Um, you can try a little bit with a diamond tip, but I'm finding that working with a paintbrush is great, and I can come in and add some of those elements. I could also use that same stiff paintbrush to go ahead and paint that snow on, you know, whether it's a little edge of a snowman or something like that. So I can go ahead and I can paint using a paintbrush. So that's kind of fun, and most of us all have a paintbrush somewhere. So then another fun thing to do is to use your framelits as a stencil and your metal stencils do clean very very quickly and easily and so you're just going to go ahead and you're going to lay your stencil down and what I found <coughs> is again working with a brush is a little bit better and gives me a little bit more control and I can just kind of come in and I can do like this as opposed to the palette knives but I have a little bit more control working with my stencils. So I can do something like this. In addition, depending on the type of paintbrush that you're working with, I can now start to add some texture as opposed to it all being raised. I can come in and I can pounce a little bit. I can swirl. So I can do some really fun different things with a paintbrush than I necessarily might be able to with a palette knife. So you're just gonna go in and let's just finish painting this. I know you guys are like, wow, like I want to see some finished samples. I mean, this is all really fun, but what's the outcome? Like, you know, what's all this going to lead to? And I promise you, I've got some fun, fun samples for you. So, oops. And the other thing then about this is that once this dried, I could indeed come back in here and I could lay my stencil down and I could add a second color of paste on top of it so I could add some more to it. So you're going to be able to use your framelits. And again, I'm just going to swish that with the um, warm soapy water and I'm going to wipe it clean right away. And then it will be great and it will be ready to use. So using stencils is another great option for you. So then another tip for you before we're almost done, you got to hang in there with me, is that once you've got your paste and you've got a whole bunch of it left, what are you going to do with it? Well, what I chose to do with it is I chose to just simply take some instead of putting it in a little container, and I just started to kind of cover and just kind of put some different, and you can see where you can also add some marks. You can do some things with your palette knife if you want. I could actually come in here and I could write a message if I wanted to. I don't write much though because I have really poor penmanship. Some of you have gotten hand notes from me and, and addressed envelopes, so you know that's the case. But again, I can come in here and I can just do some fun stuff. But So I'm not going to waste any of it. I'm going to just take it and smear it all over cards and then I can die cut through it. So I'm not going to waste any of it. So those are just a couple of the techniques. There's a couple of other fun things that we'll show you in a second video, but this is going to get you started playing with all of the fun pieces. So let's take all of this aside. And for just a second, let's just show you some of the pieces. Again, just start playing. Full card covered with um, Calypso Coral and the little diamonds. This is the one that we made today. Here you can see where I just totally covered this with white paste. Going to let it dry, and I'm going to die cut the frosting out from, for some different things. Here was another one. I didn't want to waste the colors I was working with the other day, and you can see all of the fun, lovely texture, and this is going to be so much fun to die cut. And then again, I talked to you about just playing with angles. You don't need a whole piece. So there's one for you. 
This one has the glitter on it. And I have complete samples, so this one here, we put a little bit of one color and then started to do kind of an ombre effect with it. This is a piece of designer series paper. Look how nice that's altered with the little dots. We did a beautiful mermaid sample with that. I don't remember seeing her in the stack, but we'll see. Again, just playing with random corners. This was another one of the stencils, and this is another one of the ideas, is that once it's totally dry, you can do a resist, or you can go ahead and ink and try to color it with markers as well. Here's some leaves that are really, really dimensional. I pounce those really hard. You can work with it on vellum. Just note that your vellum will get kind of um, wet when you're doing it on vellum. <coughs> so you have to know the final application and what you want to do with it. So again, just lots and lots of fun pieces that we played with. And here's a snowman. These are three circles that I did and I pounced really, really hard. These are circle framelits that I used for that template. We're getting ready to finish him, so you'll want to check back. And then again, just that reminder that instead of using your framelits themselves, the metal framelit pieces, is that you can go ahead and you can die cut from a piece of paper and now you have that stencil to work with. I think the other one's soaking, so let's just grab this one for right now. And so I can go ahead and use my cardstock as a stencil as well. If I knew that I wanted to reuse this over and over again, I might consider laminating it. So if you have a laminating machine, one of the Xyrons or something, you could laminate this piece of cardstock and that would actually make it thicker than the window, window acetate. But I can use my stencils, or my stencils, my framelits themselves to create neat stencils. So there's an example right there for you. And then just one more here. I've got my sweet little winter trees. And again, just using that paste. And these are just the same. This is the, the relief piece from those trees right there. But I'm able to come in. And everything that you, the, the squares that I just showed you and the samples that I just showed you came from one jar. This is a brand new jar that I'm opening up right now for this video but it goes a long way, especially when you take the time to scrape like this and put it back in the jar. So you're gonna have your sweet little trees and some neat backgrounds with that. So now let's take a look at some finished samples together. All of these samples will be in various blog posts throughout the coming week. A few of them have already been there. So this is one of the cards that I created. Here's the little trees with a little bit of snow on them. And this is simply an eight and a half um, piece of cardstock by four and a quarter and then it's folded so that you can easily put a four by four piece of designer paper it's a great fold and then this is the length of a traditional card and we'll do a whole video on that style this card comes with a warning this was one of those ones where I took all of the extra that and just smeared it where's the one so I took all of the extra and just smeared it around on a piece of cardstock I thought oh well, I'm gonna die cut it and have this really cool cool word make sure that it is thoroughly dry, thoroughly dry, because it will stick up into the framelit. So we kind of had to, you can see where this is a black piece here, and you can see where it's a little cattywampus, because it will stick to your framelit, especially the more detailed that it is, and then the framelit really needed wash. So um, it's a great idea. Just make sure it's really, really dry. And then another card for you. This was one here that we just took a bunch of leftover colors that I had in a tray and just did a random background and then just made it work with the happy birthday and some coordinating colors. And that's one of the fun benefits of Stampin' Up! is that our ink refills, our ink pads, our cardstocks, our ribbons, they all coordinate together. So here is, this is the piece that we created and then here it is turned into a wedding card for a fun rustic wedding. Here's one showing you again that same one but no glitter on it and we altered the designer series paper. This one here again was direct to, and the nice thing is, is I was just real careful where I placed the brick wall. I didn't put any on the flowers, even though some of it is hidden behind the greetings. But that little brick, oh, I do have our mermaid. Look at her, isn't she beautiful? I've been on a mermaid kick. So we've got our beautiful mermaid, little background on the designer paper. This is the lovely as a tree stamp set, and you may not be able to see it, but if you were to run your finger over it, and if you look at it in person, you're going to see that it's got snow dripping from the branches. This is one here that we did with the loyal and true stamp set, 
And again, it's just a partial brick wall. Another one that has the altered designer series paper. So a really fun look. There's another wedding card for you, another anniversary card. Clean and simple, just a little glitter and copper. And then one more final one for you, again, where we put it direct to designer paper, just down the side so it looked like the flowers were up against the side of a house or something like that. So all of the supplies that I used, whether it was paper, inks, refills, um, glitter, embossing powder, heat tool, framelits, can all be found in our annual catalog and or our holiday catalog. The only things that were not from Stampin' Up! was my little wash tub, my little paint tray that was courtesy of the dollar store, and the paper towels. If you do not have a demonstrator that you work with, I would love to offer you a complimentary annual catalog and holiday catalog. And you can visit me at RemarkablyCreated.com for shopping links, as well as to join my customer newsletter so that you can get details on all of the personal specials that I offer my customers. So have fun playing with your embossing paste, guys. There is a world of possibilities in this tiny little four-ounce jar. So I can't wait to see what you do. Take care and God bless.